How's it going guys? Shizu Cats here. The 1.2.0 patch has officially landed, and with it, a lot of cool new additions to the game. Bestower of Power Chapter 1 is in, along with the associated town of Donesk, and the Tyrannical Weapon series, which focuses on extra crit. In the gacha, four more characters have joined Tressa in the permanent rotation. Heathcote, Primrose, Therese, and Corin, which means you can now pull them randomly in other banners. Additionally, Three more sections have been added to the bonfires of battle in the tower, as well as the addition of the long-awaited expert hunts, so players can now double their daily guidestone yield. For more information on expert hunts, I uploaded a video yesterday that you guys can check out. Link for that will be in the description. One thing that didn't make it into this patch are the level 4 weapons for Fenrir, Innocent, and Tyrannical weapons. My guess is that those will be added alongside the other four battle-tested weapons when they eventually come out. So for now, Battle-tested weapons are still the strongest for the classes that have access to them. Today we're going to be talking about Odette, the first limited traveler available in COTC. Before we get into Odette herself, let's first talk about how the Sacred Blaze banner works. Sacred Blaze banners feature a set of characters that I refer to on my spreadsheet as recurring limited characters. As the name would imply, these are limited characters that will be coming back every so often, whenever a new recurring limited character is introduced. These characters will never be permanently gone as long as more recurring limited characters are released into the game. Sacred Blaze banners also have a couple unique features. The first is that all characters rolled in this banner are guaranteed to be at least 4 stars. This means that they're an excellent way of trying to class up a bunch of 4 stars all at once if you're on a newer account and have a lot of 3.5s. Another interesting aspect about Sacred Blaze banners is that all recurring limited units will be sparkable on future Sacred Blaze banners. So for example, let's say the next recurring limited to get released is Dorothea. You will be able to spark for either Dorothea or Odette on that banner. However, the sparks do not carry over, so you would have to roll all 200 rolls on that specific run of the Sacred Blaze Guidance banner. You can't just roll 50 now and then roll 150 on the later one, unfortunately. Okay now, let's get on to the main topic of today's video. Odette is a colleague of Cyrus Albright, and a fellow scholar, who previously worked at the Royal Academy of Atlasdom. We meet her in the original Octopath Traveler in Cyrus's Chapter 2, where she assists him in his quest, while also taking a few quick jabs at his ineptitude with women. Odette's voice actress is Asami Yoshida. While she has very few roles in anime, with her most notable being the minor character Hamada in Erased, she does have some roles in video games, such as Liviel in War of the Visions, as well as Japanese dubbing roles for Western shows and games, such as Vayne from League of Legends, and various characters in My Little Pony. In COTC, Odette represents a very powerful addition to the game. First, taking a look at her stats, she has a fairly high magic stat at 409, and is also very fast for a scholar, capping out at 313 speed. She's also the first character introduced to have access to more than one element, having access to both wind and light magic. Similar to Cyrus, this makes her a very powerful and versatile character, effectively allowing her to be two different characters on a single body. This makes her a very cost-efficient pickup should you choose to invest your rubies in trying to add her to your roster. Since we can basically treat her as two different characters, let's take a look at her kit one half at a time, starting with wind. She has access to a 3-hit wind random target that inflicts two turns of 15% wind defense down per hit. This is the exact same skill that Sophia has in her kit, which, if you're a Sophia owner, you would know is a very strong skill to have, being able to break multiple shields while simultaneously debuffing up to 6 turns on a single cast. While Odette cannot reach the 30% wind defense down cap on her own like Sophia can, if you bring other wind units like Noel, Kurtz, or Menno on the same team, you can apply the maximum debuff and keep it there basically forever, which can be an amazing way to set up for huge damage on Odette, as well as other powerful wind casters like Tikilen. She also has a 2-hit wind AoE, which is obviously a very powerful tool if you're against multiple enemies weak to wind, as well as a 1-hit 260 wind nuke, available at 5-star. If you don't have a 5-star Odette, you have access to a 170 nuke instead, but for the sake of slot efficiency, I'd usually just cast the 3-hit skill as a nuke instead. On the light side of her kit, it's actually the exact same set of skills, 3-hit light random target that inflicts 2 turns of 15% light defense down per hit is obviously strong for the same reasons as the wind version mentioned earlier. Once Varkin comes out, these two will make an extremely powerful light duo, since Varkin also has this exact same skill, 
and you can stack the two together to reach the 30% debuff cap and allow both of them to deal huge amounts of light damage. Just like Wind, she also has access to a 2-hit light AoE and a 260 light nuke, which is also only available at 5-star. Outside of her spells, she has the first 3-hit tome skill in the game, albeit random target, and she has an AoE analyze to reveal enemy weaknesses. For general play, her AoEs are often going to be your best option so that you can hit all of the enemies at once in random encounters. However, when going up against stronger enemies, especially ones that are alone, her 3-hit debuff skills and her single-target nukes really start to shine. For whichever element is appropriate, I would take the 3-hit skill with debuff and the 1-hit nuke, as well as her 3-hit tome. For her passives, they've apparently been swapped for the English release. Her 1-star passive is now the 30% wind and light damage up, an absolutely amazing passive that gives her the maximum possible boost in both of her elements, and also frees up her accessory slots for other items such as Dragon Scarves, instead of having to use runes. Her second passive is one that I recommend not touching at all. When she casts any magic skill, there's a 10% chance that the skill will be casted a second time in a row. Similar to Hanit's passive, this adds an extra RNG element that I don't want to potentially affect my break timings, so I advise not taking the passive at all. While Hanit's wasn't too bad if you accidentally took it, since you can just use a skill rather than use the attack command, on Odette, you're basically going to be casting spells almost exclusively, so it is much more likely to come up. As a recurring limited character, Odette has access to an exclusive accessory that only she can wear. It can be obtained by exchanging 100 fragments from her banner in the exchange, and like Odette herself, can be obtained on future Sacred Blaze banners. It gives her 20 magic, 20 speed, and 10 SP regen per turn. And while it's a pretty nice accessory to have, in my opinion, it's definitely not worth actively going for unless you were like 80 pulls in already and pulled Odette, and then you just needed 20 more pulls in order to get the accessory. Odette appearing in COTC poses a very awkward position for a lot of players. She's a very powerful and high value unit, basically being two characters in one. I think it could be pretty worth to at least try a couple 10 pulls on her banner, at the very least looking to maybe net some 4 star class ups, since the entire banner is only 4 stars and higher. The main problem is that we don't know when Cyrus is going to come out, and he's basically 3 units in one, making him another extremely high value target that I'm sure a good chunk of you are saving up your rubies for. Use your own judgement to determine whether rolling on Odette's banner is the right choice for you, since there's not really a good blanket answer for every player. And that wraps up my overview on Odette. As always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. One big topic that a lot of you want me to go over is which units to prepare for the upcoming Glossom Cup, so look out for some content on that very soon. But until then, this has been Cheezy Cats. See ya!